Edwindo Batista will be telling us about Python descriptors. Uh, there will be some time for questions at the end, um, so hang on to that, and I'll come around with microphones at the end. I'll leave it to you. Thank you very much. Do you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Welcome. Thanks to be here. Thanks for the organizer of putting together this awesome conference. I will be talking about descriptors. Just trying to everybody understand a little descriptor. Descriptor is a hard topic. Uh, normally, the 50 times that I saw presentations about descriptors until I understood it, it's a lot of theory and you get out of the presentation saying, okay, I kind of understand the theory, but I don't have a clue how to apply that. So with Joaq, that is Joaquin, that is the other author of this talk, we decided to do it backwards. So we like games, board games, and role games, and we decided that as we are nerds level two, we we not only wanted to play board games, but to create them, to design a system where you can create board games. So it's like playing the, the, the game, it's like a meta play. So we wanted not only to create the system, but we wanted to offer other people ways to create board games. And we wanted to offer them a possibility of creating board games in a simple way, in a useful way. So we wanted to do something like this. We wanted to have powers and characters. The powers is where you encapsulate what the powers can do. So for example, you have a strength that is a useful power, use, useful power for a character. And uh, if you have a strength, you can break walls or you can jump a hole, etc. If you have magic, you can do a spell, etc. See that it's very simple define the power. It's just a class. It's just what you can do. And the, 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 the action itself is a method that, of course, according to some value, if you have more and less magic, etc., you can do it or not. And when you define a character, you just define what powers this character has. So this is very simple written. If you write it like this, it will not work. But we wanted to do this. And we wanted to go from here. So this is how we will use this very simple mechanism. For example, you instantiate a character that is Gimli. Gimli, you can instantiate it with a lot of strength and see how you can check if, the, if Gimli can break a wall. You ask for the strength of Gimli, it's what the power can do. Also, you can, you can modify very easily the value of that power. See that how I directly modify that power in Gimli. So if I put my more power to Gimli, for example, it will be able to break the wall. Or for example, this is a, this is a character that has both powers. So it has a power with some strength and has some magic. And if he, it's OK, Gandalf can charm a tree, it's OK, but Gandalf cannot fight Saruman, but I can just put more magic in Gandalf. And from that point, Gandalf the White will be able to, to, to fight Saruman. The idea is that we wanted to present we wanted to give the powers in the characters in a very simple way to manipulate. Working with them like numbers. So you can get or you can set the, the, the powers in the character, but also encapsulating what the power will be able to do in that very same class where you define the power. So it's a very weird way of doing things, but it's very simple. So how we, how we did it, this 
I mean, we, we, didn't do, we didn't do it with magic. I mean, this is not magic. It's just we used the descriptors to make that code work. So the idea here is that we will go now a little into the theory of the descriptors, and then we go back to, to, to the board game and see how we did apply that theory. So this is the last chance. If you want to see, if you want to see the descriptors, you stay. So a descriptor in general is an attribute with binding behavior, one whose attribute access has been overridden by methods in the descriptor protocol. Very, very simple, right? It's very understand. I mean, you, you already know how, how it works. The idea is to see what we really are doing here in more simple words. The idea behind the descriptors is that you think you take control of some normal Python behavior. Every time you do a set of an attribute in some object, every time you get some attribute from some object, or every time you remove some attribute in some object, with the descriptors, you get the possibility to execute your own code instead of normal Python behavior. So when I do some object dot attribute equal 42 in that case, it's not Python just assigning the value 42 to the attribute in this object, but instead, if I'm working with descriptors, some code of mine is being executed in that moment. How is, how is, how is that? You define the descriptor with classes. For a class to be a descriptor, it has to be it has to have some special methods. In this case, we have a dunder get. The dunder get makes these descriptors ma made this class a descriptor. This dunder gate, this dunder get will be executed every time you access the attribute. So Let's see it in real code. In the, in the upper part, I have the very same class that the last slide, where I have a dunder get, and that dunder get just returns hello world. Then I define another class, that is the class where I use the descriptor, and see that x is a class attribute that is very important because the descriptor magic is activated when you are using it, you are using the descriptor as a class attribute. X is a class attribute that has an instance of dot hello world descriptor. Then I instantiate any class, and the moment that I do ac dot x, the moment that I'm accessing that attribute, my own code is being executed. So this is the proof that with descriptors, I can get in the middle of the Python execution for this get. So far, how are you doing? I mean, it's, it's totally crazy, makes sense, I already lost you. It works. I, you, you see how, how this magic happens. So. We have another special method for descriptors. We have the dunder set. The dunder set is executed the moment I set the attribute that when the attribute is the class descriptor. This is very similar to that before. I have the, my descriptor that is a normal class, but as it has the dunder set, it's a descriptor. I use that descriptor in a class attribute in another class. And then when I set that, uh, that attribute, my own code there will be called. See that the, uh, I didn't mention that. For example, in the dunder get, I receive the instance of the class and the class that that instance belongs. It's 
sometimes it uses for some clever tricks it's that the class there is not normally uses. In the set, it's different. In the set, I receive the instance that is AC and the value that I'm setting. So I also uh, receive this ble. Okay, let's see both working at the same time. This is an this is example code just to see a descriptor that has both methods, dunder get and dunder set. See that the dunder get is the dunder set. What what they do? The dunder set receives a value and just store that value in the instance dictionary. And the dunder get retrieves that value with a default in case it's not yet the, it's not there yet and just return a, a, a greeting let's use it in the second column i define a new class hello world 2 that has a class attribute again a class attribute that is a grid with an instance of this hello I instance hello world 2 and if I access if I do hello.greet that dundergate will be executed that will return hello unknown because the instance still doesn't have the who set the moment I do hello hello.greet equals something the dunder set is executed and in this case, I put that information in the instance. And when I access the attribute again, it just restore it and use it. OK. Yes or no? OK. We have two types of descriptors. We have overriding descriptors and non-overriding descriptors. This is where confusion starts to flourish. But it's, don't worry, it's very simple. They are just classified into groups because the behavior is a little different. Where the behavior is different? Here. In the, in the first column, in the left, we have an overriding descriptor. See that we have a class that has both dunder get and dunder set methods. In this case, I use the descriptor here. When I do c.d, it executes the get. And when I do c.d equals something, I execute the set. This is very similar to what we saw before. More than very similar, it's the same. In the in case of non-overriding descriptors, we do not have a set method. The difference of not having a set method is that when I use the descriptor, if I do a c.d, of course, it executes the get. But the moment I do c.d equals something, the attribute d of the instance C is overwritten by this value. So from this point on, C dot D is one to three. It's no longer the descriptor. In this case, I execute this standard set, and from this point on, C dot D is still the descriptor. This is the only difference. You have to be careful when you write your own descriptors because even if you don't want to put any special behavior in the set, you need to be careful that if you do, don't specify a dunder set in your descriptor, it may be overwritten. Of course, it's a behavior that you may want to uh, use. And we will see a very common case where that behavior of non overriding descriptor is used by you normally. Okay, 
Just for completeness, we have another special method that is dunder del that, as you may imagine, it's a, it, uh, a specified code that is executed when you delete an attribute. So in this case, when you do del ac.x, you override the, the normal Python behavior of removing that attribute, but you just execute some code of yours. OK. One note here, because when, when I present these examples, you say, oh my god, yes, you can do whatever you want with properties if instead of using the scriptors manually. Yes, you can do, but the point of the talk is to uh, talk about the scriptors. So. And ex I cannot make the examples too complicated, etc. So let's go back to wizards and dwarves and see how we use this descriptor theory in the, in the practice. Remember this, that we have the idea of having powers which encapsulate what the power can do and the character defining the, 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 the powers as class attributes and then being able to just instantiate a character try to see if the character can do some stuff asking through the power that the character has, but also modifying the values of the powers like simple numbers. This, of course, doesn't work if you just write this because some magic, we need to add some magic here. How we make this work. Okay, we make this work not only using descriptors, but also class decorators. So the idea behind all the magic is that we have this power descriptor. This is the first time I present a descriptor for the wizards and dwarves case. This is the only descriptor that we have. This descriptor that has dunder set and dunder get, when you instantiate it, you, ha you get the name of the power and the class of the power. So it can be magic and the class magic for the power you define it. And the only thing that it does is just store in the instance dictionary, very similar to the other example, it just to store the instance of the power class that is received with the value that is received. And in the, in the case of the dunder gate, it just retrieves that. How we make to this power descriptor to be used by the other parts of the system? We have two class decorator. We have this at power that gets this very simple power class that you wrote and makes two things. For one, on one, on one hand, it registers strength or magic as a power, but also makes that these classes behave like numbers. And then we have another class decorator that is character that grabs the character you wrote and for the class attributes that you specify there automatically converts them to be descriptors because there you didn't specify you just put class descriptor oh, sorry there you just put class attribute but these are not descriptors, so it automatically converts them. Before going into more detail of the code, let's see other cases where descriptors are used in real life. So, Python methods is the most 
normal case of using descriptors. When you define a, pet, a method, what is a method really? What is a def there? It's a function, right? And the function there, where is defined the function? In the class. So method is a kind of class attribute. And this works like a descriptor. The descriptor gets in, uh, does, the, the, does this magic. So when you call, when you call foo.method12, the des a, des a special descriptor ex exec is executed that calls the function you define adding a self in the front. So the magic of automatically inserting a self when you call in a method is done by descriptors. And this is our, these are non-data descriptors. So if you have an instance foo and you do foo.method equals something, you override that name. Remember that we have two types of descriptors. Then one, if you had under get and under set, the descriptor was executed. And if you, had, if you only had under get, when you uh, set the attribute, you lost the original descriptors. Methods works like that. If you, are, if you set a name or, or something with the name of the method, you lose the method in an instance. Python works like that. So Django, most of the magic in models declaration of Django is done by descriptors. The very same way that I put the, 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 the powers in the characters before. You just specify stuff at the class level, and it works. How that it works? They are descriptors. Did you ever use a slots? Slots also work through descriptors with a very detail that is not implemented in Python really, but it uses the descriptors API directly from C. But it also uses descriptors, the concept. How are we going with the time? OK. So we have time for the, for the bonus track. That is where we get into the class decorator and the detail of the code to make that game board work. Before going into the detail of the code, I wanted to present a little about class decorator because it's not a common topic. Class decorator, I don't know if you ever heard about, uh, please raise your hands if you ever uh, see a class decorator before. Awesome. And raise your hand if you saw a normal decorator before. So this is very simple. A class decorator is a function that receives a class and returns a, and returns a class. It's the same that the function decorator, but for classes. It's the same concept. If you have an, a definition of class foo, whatever, foo is the class we define. But if it, we have a class definition with a decorator, foo is not what defines. Foo is the class returned by that decorator, which receives the class with that we define it and did whatever he wants with it. It's the same than doing foo equal decorator foo the very same thing that function decorators. So how did we use it in the, in the board game? This is the power, uh, the class decorator that I mentioned before, that you just put it in the very simple power class that you define and makes it magic. See what it does. This code is not really simple, but we can make it understandable. The power receives a class. The class is this one that we are defining. And the power decorator creates another class, a new class with a type function that inherits this very class, but also inherits float. 
And this is how the behavior of a number is inserted to the power. And also registers that class name in a global dictionary that will be used later to, to retrieve it. Also, we have another class decorator that was character that we applied when we define characters. Character, the class decorator, just gets the registered powers. And if we have a class attribute in the class that is received that has the same name of a registered power, like strength or magic in, in this example, it replaces it. It replaces it, see that set utter, it replaces it with a descriptor that is our power descriptor, that is the only descriptor that we use in this, in this system. It replaces it with that power descriptor that holds the name of the, of the power and the class of the power. This is how you are be able to write this very simple code to make the board game without even noticing that the scriptors works in the back. OK, that's all. It wasn't that hard. The concept that I want for you to take here is that the scriptors allows you to get into the normal Python behavior when you get an attribute, when you set an attribute, and when you delete an attribute, that we, you have two types of descriptors. Those two types of descriptors, the difference is that in one case, when you set an attribute, the code of the descriptor is executed. And in the other type of class descriptor, when you set, you, when you set the attribute, the descriptor is removed from the instance, overwritten. And also the idea that I want for you to take from here is that it's, it's not deep magic that, OK, it maybe it's useful for me to understand because I may hit some code some when and I need to understand it. But that is something that you can really use in the cases that you want to get in the middle of the code. So take it in mind, and when you need to solve some specific stuff, descriptors may be use, useful for you. In this very um, presentation that is already published in the web, you can see the code. You, you can see it I mean, unless you have a telescope or something. But th there is the every, all the code for making everything work. So if you are interested, go paste that into a couple of .py and start to play. Some legal stuff, because I don't know, maybe Michael Jordan didn't say what I said that he said, but, and that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Liza here. And if you have any question, I'm very glad to not answer them. Okay. okay. Uh, I find this uh, descriptor thing quite appealing because it's like an alternative to when you have to do metaprogramming to insert things and stuff like that. But uh, I'm wondering how is it to debug? How hard is it compared to metaprogramming or doing everything more plain, Python? Um, it's not hard to debug at all because you have to think it like you are doing um, funny function calls. I mean, you have a code like this. Do, 
You have a code like this, and the only thing, the only things that you need to take in consideration that in the case, for example, of doing gimli.strength equal whatever, you are doing a function call at that point. So when you when you when you read your code and you know that you're accessing, accessing a descriptor, you you know that in that case you're getting to jumping to that part of the code and that's all. You, you, the moment you understand that, you can easily follow the flow of the execution. So uh, when you are doing the, well, the l I was more referring to the last part where you actually use a, a type to create a class mm. insert <laughs> in the methods. So I was more referring to the bug in that part. <laughs> Um, it just worked. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. didn't have to debug it really. Okay. It just uh, it just worked. Uh, actually, okay. when we created the presentation, it was three times more complex. Everything we found the the way to make it simple like this. That is not simple, but it it does what it needs okay. to do. Can you go to the next slide when there is a character? I think in this one, it looks like he's looking at the name of the attribute, not the actual class. So if I call, if I in the class character, I call something strength, but then I do equal to, that has nothing to do with the actual, well that's, is that? This, yes, if you, if you misspell this, mm -hmm. you, it will fail. You can, you could check for the instance and the class name, and it will be more robust. And so it c you should check, in theory, on the right and not on the left to be more sure of what you're doing, because it can, or no? You could. Yeah. It will be better. This works. Yeah, OK. I mean, th this whole board game thing, whatever, it's just an excuse for the talk. We really didn't do this for, for, for real. But this is just an excuse to, to use the script or somewhere. Uh, okay, sorry, another question. Uh, is there a reason, a reason to use a, a dunder dict, underscore, underscore dict, uh, in the get and set before, in the other slides, and not set utter, for example? Because, is it because you can't use it there, maybe? Or sorry, when, where? In the, in the under, dunder get and dunder set before. It's accessing. Done in the power descriptor. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah. Why not doing set utter there? Is that, is that doesn't work maybe or? Um, I don't remember now, but I think there is a case where it doesn't work. I don't remember why. Ah right, right. If you if you access if you if you do instance dot or where set utter instance name and the value, it will be calling the the, the the descriptor itself. So you don't you don't set the attribute; it just mess with the dict. Okay. So how do you deal with inheritance In when using class descriptors? Well, that's a very, this is an interesting question because this is one case where you cannot use properties. Because, I mean, you are encapsulating code and you want to use her inheritance, so you cannot use property anymore. You need to use proper descriptors. You just use it. It just works. There is no magic there. You can have a, a parent classes with the, the, the others' methods or whatever, um, the descriptor inherited, and it, it, it works. So basically, you have to put class decorator in both parent and child class, but ah, case, you say not when created the decorator, but when you see it in this case? No, in class decorators for character, for example. It does some magic with applying a, a right. power uh, I don't know. In that case, I don't know if I, I didn't try it. I mean, it's, I remember this, this whole board game
brain power, character, whatever. It's just an excuse for the presentation. We didn't use it in production or anything. So uh, I, I would need to, un to follow the code now. I, I didn't try it. There is another one yeah. here. Uh, in the previous slide, with here, uh, with the power decorator, uh, is there any reason why you are setting the value into the instance dictionary and not into the power descriptor instance itself? Yes, because the power descriptor will use, will maybe apply to different instances. So it's a normal behavior, maybe not in this case, but you may have this, the, 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 the descriptor instance to be applied to different attributes, so you normally store the stuff into the instance. It's what you normally see in the, everybody does. Mm -hmm. But uh, what if another descriptor wants to, instance, uh, wants to access the same key in the instance dictionary? It doesn't happen in this case. If you have that case, you can start it whatever you want. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's, I mean, there is no Python magic here. You just put stuff in some places and then use it. I mean, you could, you could have a global dictionary with the key being the instance and the name and access that global dictionary instead of storing stuff in the instance. You can pick it, you can send it to the database. But it's pretty normal for the descriptors to mess with the, with the instance dict. Yeah, um, great talk, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Can you explain more why we are initializing uh, the descriptors inside the class and not, for example, in the dunder init? And can we change the descriptor during the runtime? Uh, not on this slide, the previous one, for example. Yeah. Here on the class, you, in, yeah, you initial, initialize uh, strength and magic inside the class and not in the dunder init. I mean, the, it in the construction in. of uh, the strength and magic. The what? The construction. There, the instantiation. Yeah. Why because it, it needs to be a class descriptor. If it's not a class descriptor, it, it's, it, it's not, it doesn't work like a descriptor. Sorry, sorry. If it's not a class attribute, it doesn't work as a descriptor. The magic of have a class having get or set and being a descriptor is only in executed when that is a class attribute. So also see here that in the moment of instantiation, I'm doing self dot strength equal strength and also at this very same moment, I'm executing the, the descriptor's code. Thank you. I think that's the last of our questions. Um, okay. So everyone have a very nice lunch. Thank you very much.